Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the SIPOC model. Now, the SIPOC model helps an organization document processes at a very high level. Now, each process is documented in its own unique SIPOC document as a table, and that makes it easy to understand the key elements of each process at a glance. So why would you want to do this? Well, because it allows you to answer some really important questions about a process, such as, what is the scope? So that is, where does the process begin and end? It also allows you to answer the question, who are the stakeholders? And that's, you know, who are the suppliers and the customers? And it also allows you to answer the question, what should you be measuring? And by that, we mean, what are the key steps of the process, along with the key inputs and outputs of the process? Now, broadly speaking, there are three groups of people who can benefit from using SIPOC. Uh, so firstly, we have those new to, new to the process who need to get a quick overview of it. Secondly, we have those familiar with a process, but who need to be brought back up to speed with the process for whatever reason. Perhaps the process has changed in some way since they last looked at it. And finally, we have those who are looking to improve or change the process in some way. So let's jump in and take a look at the model. Now, when you first look at this diagram, you'd be forgiven for thinking that SIPOC is a complicated tool to understand and use. It isn't, it's actually really simple once you understand it. So SIPOC is an acronym standing for suppliers, inputs, process, outputs, and customers. And the SIPOC model, as we've said, provides a way to understand the key elements that interact with the process, as well as the key elements of the process itself. So let's take a quick look at each of the elements. So first we have process, and this is the most important part of a SIPOC diagram. Uh, and that's because the whole diagram is based upon the process. Now, a process is simply a set of activities that take one or more inputs from one or more suppliers and turn them into one or more outputs that will be used by one or more customers. Now, your aim in this section is to describe or to draw, as you can see here, there's a, a diagram showing how you might draw a simple process, but your aim here is to describe the process using no more than really four to seven steps. And by limiting the number of steps, it forces you and your team to zoom out from the detail and to consider only the big picture. Now, if you find you've used more than seven steps to describe your process, then what you can try to do is you can try to amalgamate several steps together into one, or you could try to break a process out so it spans multiple SIPOC documents. Now, next we have output, and the output from the process will be one or more products or services. Now, examples of outputs include, you know, a manufactured product or part of a product, could be a report, a computer file, lots of things. Next we have the customer. Now the customer receives outputs of the process and the customer could be a person, could be an organization, or it could even be another process. And customers are important as it's the customer or the customers who determine if the outputs of the process are satisfactory. Next we have inputs, and inputs are those items which are supplied by the suppliers and they're required by the process in order to produce its outputs. Now, examples of inputs include spreadsheets, raw materials, data files, emails, signed documents, could be an output from another process. And finally, we have supplier, and a supplier provides one or more inputs to the process. Now, suppliers can be internal or external to your organization. Now, when we create a SIPOC document, we usually begin by considering the process. However, sometimes the only reason you'll want to change a process is to meet the needs of your customer. And this is known as being customer driven. And in this case, it makes sense to begin the process with the customer, to begin this SIPOC process with the customer. Now, this approach is known as COPIS, so Customer Outputs, Process, Inputs and Suppliers. And COPIS focuses on starting with the end 
customer in mind. Now note that the COPUS acronym is simply SIPOC spelt backwards. So let's look at a simple example that almost all office-based managers will be familiar with. Now imagine you're a manager and you've just agreed to hire a new employee. Now you want to ensure that on their start day they have a laptop set up and ready to go so that they can hit the ground running. Now if that doesn't happen then your new employee may find that they're unable to do any productive work for days, maybe even weeks, while they wait for their newer laptop to you know, firstly arrive and then be set up. So here's what the SIPOC table for this process might look like. So as you can see, these people are involved as suppliers. We have the hiring manager, human resources, and the laptop supplier. So the inputs to the process, you know, you need a confirmed start date for the new employee, seven days notice uh, for the, you know, for the laptop to be ordered and turned around and set up. And you need approval from both the human resources and from the hiring manager that the process can start. And then the process itself, itself is def described in a diagram at a very high level. And then finally, once the process happens, there are some outputs. So, you know, a laptop that's set up for use by the new employee, access to email for the new employee, confirmation that everything is working and signed off as working by the new employee and by the IT department. And finally, that that confirmation is then emailed to the hiring manager. And then these are the customers for the process. Now you can probably see that without a process in place, there's lots of places where this kind of thing could go wrong. There could be communication problems between departments. There could be problems with procuring the laptop. There could be a lack of prioritization in the IT team, or there could be a need for some kind of employee onboarding process. And it's important to realize that even with SIPOC, problems in processes can still occur. And if that does happen, then it can make sense to zoom in and break down the step causing the problem. So for example, here, you might need to zoom into this step and create a SIPOC just for this step if you were having problems with procuring the laptop from your supplier, for example. Now, one thing to mention before we do move on is that there is a template uh, available for you to download via the companion article to this video, which is linked to in the description below this video. So go ahead and click on that if you'd like to get a template to try this for yourself. So in terms of the advantages of SIPOC, well, it's easy to understand and use. It shows clearly where a process starts and ends, so the scope of a process. It enables you to quickly identify the key inputs and the key outputs of a process and it enables you to quickly determine the key suppliers and the key customers, so the stakeholders. And finally, it helps create a common understanding amongst a team about a process and its key elements. There are some disadvantages associated with SIPOC as well. So firstly, using SIPOC alone won't stop problems occurring within processes as we've already seen. It's also very simplistic, so it only really serves as a starting point for process mapping. And finally, your SIPOC model is only as good as the people who created it. If key people are missing when it's created, then it's likely important items will be missing. So in summary, SIPOC is an acronym standing for suppliers, inputs, process, outputs, and customers. SIPOC provides a way to map a process at a high level, stripping away complexity. And that means that the basics of even a complex process can be understood and shared very quickly. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.